We're looking at a book written by Israeli archaeologist Israel Finkelstein. It has a provocative title. Many have thought or claimed that the three mentioned books here, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Chronicles, were written in the Persian period. But Finkelstein, by showing that parts of these books were in fact written during the Hasmonean dynasty, is pushing back the date of final composition by 200 or maybe even 300 years. Now, Finkelstein can't rule out that these books are the result of multiple hands. So he allows that some parts of the books may in fact have been written during the time of the Persian Empire. And as a side remark, I should maybe mention that we know, thanks to a comment by Eusebius, that Ezra and Nehemiah were at one time a single book. Here's the ISBN for the book. Uh, this was published in 2018 by SBL Press, that's Society of Biblical Literature Press. They've been around for over 100 years. The material in this book was originally published uh, as seven separate, separate articles uh, over a period of time from 2008 to uh, 2015. In the first chapter, Finkelstein talks about the Wall of Nehemiah. Uh, the construction of this wall is detailed in chapter 3 of the book of Nehemiah. Uh, Finkelstein gives us a map of the city of Jerusalem, but unfortunately it doesn't really give us enough detail to follow his argument. Here's a map from uh, the New Oxford Annotated Bible, and it shows us the outline of the wall of Nehemiah, at least as it is traditionally understood to have been uh, now, Finkelstein doesn't believe that this wall was actually built. Uh, here's what the new encyclopedia of, uh, of excavations of the Holy Land has to say about the wall of Nehemiah. It says, only a few traces have survived of the city wall Nehemiah rebuilt along the course described in the Bible. Uh, so, and what Finkelstein has to say about that, uh, he talks about these traces and he says, both finds, the wall uncovered by Kenyon and the structure unearthed by Crowfoot cannot be dated to the Persian period. But the main thrust of uh, Finkelstein's uh, argument has to do with where Persian period remains, such as pottery and seals have been discovered. So here's an example, by the way, of uh, a Yehud seal, which is uh, believed to originate from the Persian period. Uh, and to follow the argument, um, it would have been nice if Finkelstein had given us this map right here. This is uh, from, again, from the New Encyclopedia of Excavations of the Holy Land, and it gives with letters where the various excavations on the city of David have been conducted. Now, what Finkelstein says is that almost all of the Persian, uh, Persian period remains come from this area right here, Area E. And by comparison, uh, the wall of Nehemiah supposedly went around all of this area and then included the Temple Map, the Temple Mount, which is off the, uh, the map at the top. His conclusion is on, uh, on page 29. What he says is that the finds indicate that in the Persian and early Hellenistic periods, Jerusalem was a small village that stretched over an area of circa 20 denims. And a, a denim, by the way, is about a quarter of an acre. It, with a population of a few hundred people, that is not much more than 100 adult men. This population and the depleted population of the Jerusalem countryside in particular, and the entire territory of Yehud in general, could not have supported a major reconstruction effort of the uh, ruined iron two fortifications of the city. In addition, there's no archeological evidence whatsoever for any reconstruction or renovation of the fortifications in the Persian period. In chapter two, Finkelstein argues that the list of returnees, which appears in Ezra chapter two, and which is also duplicated in Nehemiah chapter seven, uh, Finkelstein argues that the list uh, was produced in the Hasmonean period. And he uses what I think is a genius argument. It uses the fact that this list contains toponyms, so place names, and that almost all these places have had archaeological excavations or at least surveys performed on them. Now, it isn't always perfectly straightforward 
uh, connecting place names in the Bible with, with actual geographical locations. And there's some uncertainty about where I and Ono are, and Hinkelstein talks about that here. But he, in the end, produces um, this table for all 17 places. And for each of them, he indicates whether there are Iron II, that is uh, pre-exile, Persian, or Hellenistic remains. And the Hellenistic period is the only one which has remains at all 17 locations. Additionally, uh, Finkelstein says that of the top five sites with Persian remains, um, and, and specifically Yehud seal impressions, uh, so the five sites with the most Yehud seal impressions, of those five sites, three of them do not appear in the list. So to Finkelstein, this is really a list that would have been produced in the Hasmonean uh, period. Uh, so, you know, this was originally an article published in a journal. Uh, the book has a little extra material at the end. Um, so there's these rebuttals that uh, Finkelstein makes to people who uh, raise objections to points in his article. And one of the objections was by Zebit. Um, and he, he talks, he says that archaeological surveys are not reliable. So an archaeological survey is when uh, material is just recovered from the surface of a site. So no actual dig was performed. And what Finkelstein says is, it is true that a survey of a given site may miss periods of occupation uh, later revealed in excavations, but this is certainly not true in the case of sites which produce hundreds of sherds. And the case described in this chapter involves a large number of sites and hence the chances of a systematic error in the field, skipping the same periods time and again are slim. In chapter three, Finkelstein talks a little bit about uh, the size or the population of Yehud in the Persian period and also in the Hellenistic period. So the number he comes up with for the Persian period, um, and here's his worksheet right here. He's, he's uh, stating the number of sites, their size, and he's using this estimate of 200 inhabitants per built up hectare. So a hectare is two and a half acres. Um, so he comes up with a number of about 12,000 people in Yehud during the Persian period. Meanwhile, in the Hellenistic period, and here's his worksheet uh, for the Hellenistic period. Uh, for the Hellenistic period, his number is uh, about 42,000 people. And this is specifically about at the time of Judas Maccabeus, 160 BC. Uh, so um, based upon that number of 42,000 people, uh, Finkelstein believes that Judas Maccabeus would have been able to raise an army of about 5,000 men. Okay, so in chapter five, Finkelstein basically uses the same argument again to, to show that uh, the genealogical list in the first book of Chronicles in chapters two through nine is uh, dates from the Hasmonean period. So those lists, again, they contain uh, toponyms and as uh, Finkelstein mentions here, archeology span is especially strong when many identifiable toponyms, that is sites, are given. And so here's the, the list, it spans several pages of uh, places, the table that uh, Finkelstein builds up uh, and whether they have iron to Persian or Hellenistic uh, uh, remains. Uh, as he says here, assuming that the distribution of sites mentioned in the list of genealogies reflects a given genuine moment in history, their date can be verified according to the archeology span of these sites. Uh, the only period that fits both criteria is that of the Hasmonean rule in the second half of the second century uh, BCE. And over here, um, uh, Finkelstein talks a little bit about why he thinks the lists were produced. Uh, what he says is the genealogical lists probably are meant to legitimize Jewish rule over this area, part of which was inhabited by a large Gentile population by giving it ancient Israelite tribal pedigree. And this seems to be in line with several Hasmonean pseudo pseudepigraphic compositions, the Book of Jubilees, which was written in the days of John Hyrcanus, and possibly the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs, which looked at the Bible in order to explain and legitimize the gradual territorial expansion of Judea in the second century BC. Chapter seven is the last chapter, and it's got some interesting information. So the second book of Chronicles repeats a lot of the information 
that are in the books of Kings. But there is some independent information in the second book of Chronicles that does not appear in Kings. It says here that scholars have been divided on the historical reliability of these unparalleled texts. Some have argued that the author had access to old sources which had not been available to the Deuteronomistic historian or omitted by him, while others have dismissed the historical validity of the unparalleled descriptions. Uh, Finkelstein says that three factors seem to support the view that the unparalleled accounts were indeed written with no access to old material. Uh, here's the three factors right here. I guess I'll skip over reading those. Uh, then Finkelstein talks a bit about the date of Chronicles, specifically the latest possible date that Chronicles could have been written. And he addresses um, a fact which is often used to, uh, to show that Chronicles had been written by 200 BC, and that is a mention uh, by the historian Eupolemus. Um, Anyway, Finkelstein thinks that Chronicles was written uh, after 200 BC, and so he uh, pokes some holes in the Eupolemus case uh, here. Uh, here, uh, Finkelstein says that Chronicles belongs to the genre of rewritten or reworked Bible, which was popular in the second century BCE. Uh, for instance, Jubilees, which is a, a reworked version of the Pentateuch. Uh, so, uh, Finkelstein's conclusion in chapter 7 is that Chronicles, or at least the Second Chronicles, chapters 10 through 36, was written or significantly expanded in the late 2nd century BCE. A couple of interesting things I want to show in the, the back matter as well. So there's, there's a bibliography, and this book by Lipschitz and Vanderhoeft, uh, called the Yehud Stamp Impressions, seems to be particularly important because it's, uh, it's um, is used to date remains. And the book is actually still in print. You can get that on Amazon. 